Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host Stan Rattan and this is a blue collar wine program where I help, hope to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Now, continuing on with the white theme. The white album. No, really, we're, we're going with whites. Going into summer, like I said. And today we're going to do, we did Riesling on the last episode, now we're going to do going to do Pinot Gris and Grigio, well these are all Gris, yes. Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio, same grape, sometimes they call it Grigio, sometimes they call it Gris. Mostly in Italy, all in Italy, it's always Pinot Grigio, and in the United States it just depends. They used to have to call it Pinot Gris in the Willamette Valley, now they've changed that. They can call it Pinot Grigio if they want, so you know, the rules in the U.S. are, you know, sometimes you can't figure them out. I used to like it when they did Gris, I, I could almost tell stylistically the difference between a Gris and a Grigio. Grigios were always a little leaner, um, uh, more on the fresher side, and Gris, you know, they got some oak treatment, so they'd have a little bit of a rounder, more viscosity to them, but it isn't that way anymore. Sometimes a Gris can taste like what used to be a Grigio anyway. It's kind of confusing in that sense, but unlike Riesling, a lot of people drink Pinot Gris Grigio. I mean, it's still, well, it's the second leading white in the United States. Uh, behind, it's ahead of Moscato and uh, Sauvignon Blanc. And, you know, I'm, I've said it before, I'm not a huge Pinot Gris Grigio guy. It's not, when I'm looking for a white to drink, it's not the first place that I go. Uh, so, you know, it's just that I don't hate it. It just, to me, I, I always try to understand why do people drink Pinot Gris Grigio. And I think it's because they just don't want to think about what they're buying. It's kind of like going to McDonald's or Wendy's or one of those fast food chains where you know what you're going to get. You go there because you don't want to be surprised. You're not in the mood to experiment with your cuisine that day. So you go to a place, you know, get a Big Mac. We know what a Big Mac's going to taste like. I like Big Macs every once in a while. But for some reason, I just, I just do not go... I did get wild about uh, the 2012 Pinot Gris out of Oregon because that was just such a classic vintage and it seemed like all of the Pinot Gris, in fact, Elk Cove sold out, bango, just like that, and Panther Creek, boom, was gone. I mean, uh, well, I raved about Elk Cove and then the Spectator wrote an article about it, gave it this huge score and it was gone. I mean, it was gone. If anyone doubts the power of the, the media, like the wine spectator, uh, wine advocate, you know, wine enthusiast, you know, when they get wild about a wine, people read that, it just goes. And, you know, a lot of that is the, the wine buyers. They did, they're the first ones to go nuts, and then they pass it on to consumers. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, there are some stores, restaurants, that have a ton of the 12 Elk Cove Pinot Gris in stock because they bought so much of it. Anyway, off my soapbox, Pinot Gris. A lot of people love it. So we're going to review three. Two, one from Oregon, two from California. And um, let's get started. 2012, as I talked about, this is the 2012 Willamette Valley Pinot Gris from Terrapin Cellars. Now, in all fairness, I have, I have been a little bit rough on Terrapin. Their last Pinot Noir I tasted was, well, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Let's take a look at the label. Terrapin Cellars 2012 Pinot Gris Willamette Valley. Got that? There you go. Okay. Let's see what we get on the nose. I get a little bit of a... Uh, Watermelon rind. It's a little grassy. There's a lot of melon, a little bit of lemon going on. Apples. I get a touch of peach. Interesting nose. I like it. I like that water, you know, that watermelon rind, how that smells. I like that. Let's see what we get on the palate.
interesting minerality on this one. I get that kind of watermelon closer to the, the rind. Definitely a melon, um, like a honeydew. Lemon is in the backdrop. I definitely get a lot of lemon. There's an interesting minerality to this wine. I get like honeysuckle. When's the last time you had a honeysuckle? I remember I used to when I was a kid. We had to go around and just, we loved to chew on those honeysuckles. They were so good. I gotta do that again. It's been a long time. I haven't seen any around here. Anyway, this isn't as round as some of the 2012s I've tried. This is on the leaner side. It's got the more lemon, uh, mineral, a little citrus thing going on. Of course, that would be lemon. Duh. No, but like an almost like an orange citrus. I get like white flower blossoms on it. Yeah, it's okay. It's not great. It's above average. I'm going to go C plus on that one. $13. I, I might have forgotten to mention that. I got to, you know, boom, 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 boom. Go through this process. Now let's go to Cali. 2013. J Vineyards and Winery. Pinot Gris. $16. Show you the label. I like Jay Vineyards. They do a nice job. They make a great sparkling wine. They do a pretty good Pinot, too. I do quite well with this at the store. Um, we just had, had this, a, a tasting event I did. Didn't do so well there. It's actually surprising. You know, the thing about that is I think it was the order that it went in. You know, you have to be so careful with the order of your wines and we had this uh, Sauvignon Blanc that was just crisp and acidic and beautiful and uh, you know we put it in front of this probably should have put this in front of that it kind of spoiled a little bit my bad anyway let's see what we get on the nose so this has a little coconut meat thing going on lemon I even get a little dusty rock action which is quite interesting There's a, the lemon on this is almost like lemon pledge lemon. You know how that smells? That's why I'm getting a little oily lemon. I definitely get like an apple uh, bubble yum. You know, the apple flavor bubble yum gum. Very interesting on the nose. I like that coconut element that comes through. A little bit of apple. Let's see what we get on the palate. The apple comes through in spades on the back end. A little bit of pear blended in. Um, I get a little bit of that bubble yum flavor, like almost like a bazooka bubble gum thing, but not heavy. It's not big time. Melons, apples, lemon. A little bit of oiliness on the back, very back end. That coconut element, that coconut meat comes through. But, you know, this is kind of boring. I know that's what people, I know that's what people are looking for. They just, you know, they don't want to think about Pinot Gris too much. But this is, it's, I mean, it's got those characteristics, but it's a little bit boring to me. I mean, it's a little in, I hate to use the word insipid, but it just, there's nothing, there's, it's not lively on the palate. It's just kind of there. Hi, I'm Jay Pinot Gris. Nice to meet you. Bye. <laughs> Seriously, not a lot there. I'm going C minus on that one. Not really excited about that. <sighs> 16 bucks. For $13, you can go with the uh, Terrapin. <sighs> Let's move on. Now, Joel Gott. Pinot Gris. Oh, I thought, see that threw me off. 
this is Willamette Valley Pinot Gris. Joel God does some negotiant work, and uh, you know he's he obviously this is from 2012. I did not realize that it's Willamette Valley. That threw me off. I'm so used to Joel God stuff being from uh, uh, California. 2012 Willamette Valley Oregon Pinot Gris. This should be interesting. All right, there you go. Joel Gott, you know, very, very good winemaker, and he's doing a lot of stuff, and, you know, he's got a lot of ventures going on. But, he, you know, the quality of his wines, are, he keeps it up, even with all the things he has going on. $15, I think I mentioned that. Let's see what we get on the nose. That's a little challenged. A little bit of pear action. I get a little lemon, a little white flower blossom, maybe apples, a little bit of apple coming through. I'm having to really shake this baby up to get some smells out of it. Yeah, it's got a, all those things I mentioned, but it's, it is definitely aromatically challenged. I mean, I'm really having to work it to get those things out of it, so. Let's see what we get on the palate. Much more interesting on the palate. Kind of has a nice steely edge to it, which is, again, interesting. Like the... Uh, the terrapin, you know, you, some of the 12s I've tasted because it was a little bit warmer, you know, they have a fuller bodied fruit, but this has a nice steely kind of uh, sharper, more acidic edge to it. Lemons, apple, like a, like almost a Granny Smith apple, a lot of lemon. A little bit of uh, like a, not a little bit of a honeydew melon thing going on. Definitely get white flowers coming through. Nice bracing acidity, which is very interesting. Good long finish. A little bit of minerals on the finish, which is kind of uh, good. This would be great. Um, actually, this one would be nice with if you're doing oysters or clams or something like that. This would be really good with that. Nice job, Joel Gott, Lament Valley. Pinot Gris. I get a little bit of it, just a touch of honey. Nice dry, bone dry finish. $15, I like it. I am going to go B on that one. The best of the bunch by far. You know, still not my favorite wine to go to, but you know, they're, they have their place. In the wine market, obviously a lot of you guys like this wine. I think you're going to like the um, Terrapin and the Joel Gott. And, uh, you know, looking forward to summer. Lots of white wine is going to go down this summer with all the warm weather, barbecues, all that. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Cheers. And here's to keeping the snob out of wine.